Hi everyone, welcome to this new dev vlog of Voxend, my voxel open world sandbox game. Last time, we implemented debugging tools like collider visualizing to help us developing physics and collisions. At the end of the video, I said that just before implementing physics, I needed to separate the client from the server. Well, it turned out to be a very long process, as I explained on this weekly blog post. So I decided to pause the implementation and go for physics anyway. Because I put networking in a separated branch in the get repository, I just have to switch back to the main branch without any consequences. So let's go for physics, but just before we get started, I wanted to introduce Voxen website. I'm posting every Monday at midday a summary of what I did in the past week, and explain stuff I don't in the videos. I also made a weekly newsletter and highly recommend it. When a blog post is available, you'll receive an email with a one minute summary of the post, with pictures and a link to the post in case you want to read it later. Finally, the pre-alpha roadmap is available on the website. Each task has a priority, a quick summary, dependencies on other tasks, etc. Let's jump right into physics. In the roadmap, I separated collisions into three parts. Entity versus terrain, gravity, and entity versus entity. Let's first focus on entity versus terrain. Our terrain is made out of cubes, and our entities have a collider which is an AABB, an Align Axis Bounding Box. Because of this, my first attempt at collisions detection was an AABB versus AABB algorithm that goes like this. Move the entity and determine a zone around the player. And for each voxel, if it is solid and if the collider is overlapping, then take the least overlapping axis and push back the object. Rinse and repeat and you have a simple collision system. Ok, let's go now over the pros and cons. Pros. This is efficient. We are only checking a few voxels around the entity and the mathematical formulas used are fast and compact. Cons. Because we are only checking voxels around the entity after the velocity is applied, if the entity is moving faster enough, it might go through undetected voxels leading to tunneling. This is really bad, because we have to set a maximum speed value, and because our voxels are small, it's likely that tunneling will occur a lot. But that's not all. Take this example. If the red cube moves right between the blue ones, then the least overlapping axis is the right one, so the cube will get pushed on the right and then pushed back. This behavior is not correct. And worst, if we start the check with the second cube, then the resulting collision is not the same. Ok, so AABB versus AABB is bad for this type of collisions. We need to find an algorithm that totally prevents tunneling and is deterministic. Meaning the resulting correction should not depend on the choice of any kind. At first, I recycled the detection part of the algorithm and tried implementing my own correction. But this wasn't efficient, and worst, it wasn't working. I read a lot on the internet, tried many implementations, but nothing was successful. Until I found this article, describing a swept AABB versus AABB algorithm. This technique is brilliant. First, there is a broad phase. We loop through every possible voxel that we might collide with and detect if it is solid or not. If it is, we run the swept AABB algorithm which calculates the time the collider A takes to enter and exit the B1. On the starting position, the time is 0 and on the final one, it is 1. Once we have them on each axis, we compare them to determine if the collision actually occurred. For example, if the exit time is greater than the entry one, then there is no collision. When the minimum entry time of the collider into the voxel is calculated, we have to repeat the process to every other one and keep track of the minimum one. 
When we exit the loop, we just have to multiply the velocity vector with the minimum time and voila the entity is stopped right before entering the first obstacle. This totally removes tunneling because even if the velocity is super high, we will always check every possible voxel and keep track of the minimum entry time. Basically, going faster only really increases calculation time. However, we are not finished yet. The entity is just stopped, like it would in real life, but in video games, we can the slide along walls when moving. To calculate the slide, we have to determine the normal of the face we hit, and use it to project the remaining velocity vector on the hit face. But now, imagine that there's another object blocking the slide. Well, you guessed it. We repeat the collision detection one more time with the position and velocity updated. But that's not finished. In 2D, two detections are needed to fully resolve a collision, because we first project the remaining velocity, removing one axis, and then we project it again, so the entity can just stop. But in 3D, there is three possible axes, meaning that we have to do a third pass to be absolutely sure that the sliding of the sliding is not blocked. Before doing the two other passes, we of course do a broad phase to eliminate unreachable voxels. This is working perfectly. I link the article in the description, but I had to make a lot of modifications. Because I struggled a lot on this, with not so much resources available, I will do a free tutorial on collisions and physics on my website, thibsworkshop.com, so stay tuned! One last thing, collider visualization helped me a lot. Also, I added a little crosshair to show me the axis. This is super helpful when going through blocks only on certain directions. So remember to always give yourself tools to debug your program faster. Okay folks, that's it for this devlog. I'm splitting physics into two parts, otherwise the video would have been too long. Next time, we'll add gravity and implement forces to move our entities. We'll also see entity versus entity collisions. We'll be able to push them depending on our relative mass. This will be awesome! If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment, it helps me a lot. And as always, thanks for watching.